I love a ribbon. <laughs> Simple as that, right? What's up, it's Luis from America's Best Restaurants and we travel the country coast to coast to find the places where you need to eat at on a weekly basis. And today we are in Chattanooga, Tennessee at a restaurant called Steve Arino's. It's kind of like an Italian and Irish mix. We're gonna get to talk to Steve, who's the namesake. We're gonna see some of their amazing items like their pizza, a few other things, and the inside is absolutely beautiful. Look, I know you're hungry because you're watching this, so are you ready? Let's do it. So now we are inside Steve Reno's here in Chattanooga and we're here with Steve. That's the namesake, That's right. Steve Reno's. So right out of the gate, Steve, before we get into the story, I gotta ask you a question. Okay. I have an item right here that's kind of an anomaly, right? Because you, this is essentially Italian with an Irish flair, right? Right. Talk to me about this. Okay, so go I, I asked you in the kitchen, I'm like, what gives, man? So tell me, what about, what, what's this? So going back in history with the concept, okay. we started out in a small town, the first restaurant. Okay. This being the third. And it being a small community, we had to get, we had a lot of repeat business. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring things out to the people that they would enjoy and eat. Okay. So, cause you know, we didn't want to have them to come in every day to eat lasagna or whatever. Right. So we started putting together these nice salads and stuff okay. from our backgrounds. Okay. And this was one of the salads that just went over phenomenal. Okay. And we, it's, it's a huge salad. So this is, what kind of salad is it? It's an ahi tuna salad with the ginger dressing. Oh man. It's got fresh, it's got mandarin oranges, craisins, tomatoes, feta cheese, got mm. the wasabi and ginger on the side. A little soy if you like it. So good. <laughs> it's good. But like I said, it was an anomaly. When you say, oh, we're gonna make an ahi tuna salad for these guys, I'm like, whoa, hold on, rewind. We're in the kitchen, I'm like, did you just say ahi tuna salad? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's an odd thing to have in a menu that's like a Italian-ish, but it's, it's amazing. It's good, isn't it? It's so good, yeah, so, so good. And you'll find that a lot in, the, in my menu as you go through it more. I mean, there's a lot of things that I just like to be different. I don't, I mean, I wanna be that, you know, that place you go to, hey, there's something for everybody on my menu. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Now, I know when we were talking off camera, you were telling me, you essentially come from corporate, right? Mm -hmm. Where would you work in at corporate originally? I started out, with my very first job, well, my very first job of all things, I was 15 years old washing dishes in an Italian restaurant. Okay. But I guess as I got older and got through school, I went into the pioneer days of Applebee's. Okay. And then we went on the road with them. So I'm opening some restaurants in different parts of the country and uh, got into the higher management. And then I did another concept, a Mexican restaurant, which uh -huh. was real big out of California. Yeah. And then after that, before I only got out of that, I went into the sales end of it. Okay. Which I say on the other side of the fence, I work for right. a food distributor. Okay. Which was great because it got me in the back door of a lot of restaurants. I met a lot of independent guys, you know, that were on their own, and it taught me a lot about brands. Okay. You know, yeah. different things that I wanted to bring inside my doors yeah. and the way people made things. And it was, it was just a great experience. So I was able to combine both sides of the fence when I created my own concept. Right. Love it. That's pretty cool. And and you mentioned the whole the brand thing. You got in in the back and you learned about brands and everything. Because I know you're very brand loyal. I am. Right? There's only one line of tomato products I use, which uh -huh. is Status Sauce out of California. They, they everything when they pack them in the fields, it, it's all packed fresh. You don't have mm -hmm. all the preservatives. The colors are dark red and rich as compared to a lot of things. It, you know, distributor can come in here and say, Hey, I want to cut your tomatoes with you, and and I can save you this much. You know, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not. I'm, I'm staying with my cheese. I'm staying with my sausage product, my fontanini's, my my right. bread, my hoagie. You right. know, so I'm very loyal. Right. Consistent. Oh, consistency. That's that's the number one thing. Now, you have an item 
that is basically the claim to fame here, right? It is. And and even one of our other hosts, one of our other executive producers told me, you got to make sure you ask Steve about this. <laughs> Steve, talk to me about this right here. What do we have? The beach bread became my biggest selling appetizer after I opened. It's not an original item. Okay. You know, but it's, we sell more of that than anything. Okay. And I was down at a place in Florida and they had something like this on the menu. And I just was at a bar on the beach. And uh, I oh, thought, yeah. If I go back and I take something like this and I put my homemade blue cheese dressing on it, add bacon to it on some really good bread, I think I'll have a winner. I couldn't wait to get back to the restaurant and make it because it was all up here in my head. Mm -hmm. And I just started letting people try it and it was instant success. It's in the book in Alabama, 100 Dishes to Eat Before You Die. It's featured in that book. 100%. This is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I would have never thought to put blue cheese on it. But you had me try the blue cheese in, in, in the back. It's because typically blue cheese is pretty potent. Right. This one was nice and mellow, but you can still taste it. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. And there's so many people that won't eat it. So it's like, it's I don't so want to tell you it's got blue cheese on it until after you take that first bite and experience all those flavors. It's so good. <laughs> so good. I'm glad you brought that out. And I'm glad that Doug, our executive, executive producer, told us you got to have this. That's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Now, Steve, I know you have a, a background. You started working in an Italian restaurant. Was that influential to you opening this? Not so much the Italian, but uh, I got to get lay a lot of credit. As I went through the corporate world, I got to, and I, one of my customers mm -hmm. down in Cape Coral, Florida, yep. uh, was a place called Papa Joe's. Okay. And Eddie, the owner, was we became really good friends. I was a salesman and everything. And so he kind of shared a little bit with me, and uh, I borrowed some of his ideas and incorporated into my own when I decided to go on my own. I was living in Florida, I was up in Chattanooga, here all place, mm -hmm. investing in real estate. And I just kept stumbled across, stumbled across an old building. I said, you know, if I could do this, let's give it a shot. I wasn't scared, It'd be a new opportunity. And if it didn't work, you know, I could still, you know, survive. And wow, we're just, you know, here I'm 15 years later. Wow, well, congratulations. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing amazing now let me ask you this what made you decide to say you know what i want to break out and go out on my own just i had been in the business for so many years and doing the corporate world you know every time you would make more profits you know they would introduce that new bonus plan and pay structure and all that mm -hmm. and i you know it gave me the opportunity to work for myself and uh put out my own ideas and and you know introduce it to people coming in the door and do things my way and it's just I just love socializing with the guests mm -hmm. I love coming up with you know people will come in and say just go make me something oh, that's and, I'll awesome. just, and I'll just go back there and what is he what am I reading you know it's like waiting on a table what am I reading and right. just you know just go back there and make them something and then just throw them you know wow them. <laughs> well one, th one thing that stuck out to me when we were in the kitchen you're excited like yeah. you were always smiling laughing oh let me show you how I make the pizza and everything it was very entertaining very like, man, this dude is into it. I'm, I'm very proud of my yeah. products. No, absolutely. It's one thing I noticed immediately. <laughs> now, when I walked into this location, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then you have two sides to it, right? So the right side is kind of set up as kind of like a pub, but then the other side is it, still the same building, but it looks totally different. It does. And it's, you know, that's where your families are going right. to center it. I think we do bring families up here, but right. you walk in there with the kids, on the table, we have the butcher paper with yes. the crayons. And I have to tell you, when the kids have something to do, there's no screaming or yelling in a restaurant. And uh, it's great, but of course the adults love to draw too. You know, <laughs> yeah, a server can go up and put their name on the table and this is their server. Or, you know, it's it's amazing how many people take their art with them. <laughs> really? <Yeah>. That's cool. <laughs> That's very cool. So when, so when you were putting together the concept here, because I know you have an original location, when you were putting together the concept here, what what was your your imagination behind it? What was the idea behind? It? Just something that was more modern, okay? Because the other ones kind of got that old flair, okay? It's because it's in the old building, so I wanted something new, and modern with Chattanooga because the way it's growing and this area we're in is north of shore. It's, it's very modern. The buildings are modern, um, so I wanted to match into the community something gotcha. that would, you know, just 
looked very visual when you walked in. And when you walked in, that's the first thing you said, wow, yep. this place is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now we talked about the pizza. This is what you were like smiling and everything making. So talk to me about the pizza. All right, well, we make our own dough, which you saw. Oh yeah. And it's a thinner style. This is, you know, like maybe some of this comes from my buddy mm -hmm. Papa Joe's down there mm -hmm. in Florida. Um, everything on top is fresh. We make the sauce. It's a really good mozzarella. Oh, yeah. Yep. The sausage is cooked with raw on top. It's the last mm -hmm. thing we put on because all that oil is all cooked with the pizza. Great flavor. It's a really good sausage. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so with that fresh, crisp dough that we saw, we saw making every morning and, and all the fresh ingredients, you know, we oh, have yeah. a lot of specialty pizzas, but I want you to experience the dogs. No, that, that was phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. <laughs> hey, you guys take pride because I remember. Uh, the gentleman in the back mixing the dough and then you put it in the big mixer with the big dough hook. It was awesome. It's awesome. So you make everything fresh, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now, one thing is this right here. This is a Cajun pasta. Cajun pasta. So tell me about the Cajun pasta. So it's made with, it's our Alfredo sauce with a blackened seasoning. Oh, it's got okay. uh, chicken breast and dewy sausage and shrimp all in a blackened seasoning. It's uh, one, that and my lasagna, my most two popular selling pastas. Is it? So, that's so good. So good. It's and that shrimp is beautiful. <laughs> Be it's the way that shrimp should be cooked. Beautiful, oh my God. Great flavor, not overpowering. It's uh, it's a little bold. You can taste it, but it's not, oh my God, it's gonna burn my mouth. A lot of like that. It's phenomenal. A lot of caterings go out with that meal. Really? A lot of people like that in bulk. It's phenomenal. Now, one thing, that I noticed right away here on the pup side is what's right behind us. So you have these signs that you had essentially printed. Can you tell me the story? Because we, we walked outside and you showed me, told me the whole story. And it's really cool because it, it's a part of you helping preserve history. Yes. So tell me about the signs that we have right behind us. So when I came into this location, I recalled, and we're trying to think of the decor, put the decor in, and I recalled reading an article mm -hmm. when they tore down the old building that was here. Uh -huh. And what it was, they had all these eight murals on the wall behind me on the building next door. Mm -hmm. And it goes back, I think, to the 30s. What would happen, these guys would go around in their old panel trucks, and they were called wall dogs. And then all these toxic, dangerous materials, they would paint murals for a small fee. And when they couldn't find any more work in the town, they would move on to the next town. Well, when they knocked down the building, all of a sudden, here's all these old pictures that have murals that are 80, 90 years old on the old bricks next door. Yeah. So I said, how cool would that be to get a, get that article and go have them blown up and have part of it brought back here? And people come in and they say, I remember that. I remember that. Cool. So it's so, it's really cool. <laughs> it definitely, definitely gives it a unique mm -hmm. flair to your restaurant and it helps preserve history. Absolutely. Which is awesome. I mean, I'm a sucker for all this stuff. I, I love all the <laughs> antiques and, and just the, the yesteryear advertising and all these different things, which is cool. It gives it gives the restaurant character, sure. which is absolutely amazing. Now, another dish that you have right here is this, this is one. a chicken marsala. Chicken marsala, let's go. So let's I wanted to it. give you kind so of a So nice... talk to me about the chicken marsala. Cause when we had it in the kitchen, you, you played it, you like, smell this. Oh my yeah. God. So it's fresh chicken breast, obviously. They make the sauce to order. Everything's made back there to order. Um, I'll only use one brand of Marsala wine because I've, there was one time I ran out, I had to go get some. I said, oh, this isn't the same. Right? <laughs> but there's a good bit of flavor in that dish. Mm. Oh, yeah. So good. Mm. Nice and juicy. Great, great dish. Great dish. Wow. Man, <laughs> so far, it's home run all the way. Steve, you, I don't know, man. This is gonna be one of my favorites here in Chattanooga. <laughs> now, one other thing that you brought from the old restaurant to this one, you have the tin on top of the bar. Yes, that comes out so, of my old building up there in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, over there, the home of Lodge Manufacturing. Um, so in the three levels, it's a three-story building up on the, the tin is still preserved on the three levels. Okay. And when we did the bottom floor, it was actually covered up. We took down all the drop ceilings mm -hmm. and brought it back and, you know, preserved it. So I thought, let's bring some of the old store down into this store, kind of bring, you know, because that's part of our concept up there. And let's, you know, marry it to this restaurant. And I love it, man. It's pretty. So. And it's cool because you don't see that anymore. No. You really don't. 
Now, going to the bar, I know you guys have a, a lot of local beers and local bourbons and everything like that, mm -hmm. right? That's very cool. Yeah, you gotta like to have the local. There's a micro, lot of microbreweries popping okay. up here in Chattanooga. Okay. So I try to bring those in. Yeah, and I did see a lot of people that will sit at the bar, have lunch, have a little cocktail. Boom, and they'll, they'll be on their way. So it's a really cool setup. And I, I, I love the way that you set it up because there's two two separate sections of the restaurant, but they're still together. Yes. So it's like when you walk into their two street, they go le left or you go right. Left, if you want to go with the families and the whole thing, and right, you, you can still do family, but it's more of the pub-ish kind, right. of, kind of vibe, but it's still all cohesive, yeah, which I really like. We got the TVs up here. don't have TVs in the back. No. Yeah, it's a completely different vibe, but it works. It works. Now, one other thing is an Irish thing, right? Because I'm an Irishman. Because you're an Irishman. There we go. <laughs> so tell me, tell me about this. This is my Reuben panini. And okay. we, we do bake the corned beef in house. It's a very special way that I do it. It takes about four and a half hours to cook these brisket. Wow. And it's just mouth watering, just falls apart. Okay. So, so what made you put this in the menu? I love a Reuben. <laughs> Simple as that, right? So, but I marinate that corned beef in Guinness. I season it, I bake it in honey mustard dressing. It's so good. This damn good. Damn good, and this bread, yeah. we had a conversation about bread in the back. If the bread ain't right, it's not gonna work. It's so good, man. <laughs> so good. And I remember you mentioned, and homemade pasta salad, oh, yeah. you were plating it, I remember that. Come on, man. <laughs> what else is there to say? No wonder you put your name on the restaurant. Phenomenal. I'm blown away. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm blown away, man. What Doug said, he was 100% right. From the beach bread to the pasta to the anomaly, that's what I'm gonna call it. The ahi tuna salad, I'm gonna call it the anomaly. It's all good. This is phenomenal. Everything, everything's great. I love the dough. I love everything that I've had, even one thing that's not on the table, but I had it before, because you had me try it right in the morning. You gotta have the mozzarella sticks, because they make them in-house. They don't buy the mozzarella sticks. There's a gentleman in the back that cuts the block of cheese, breads it, the whole thing. Unbelievable. Fresh. Yeah, unbelievable. Great breading, it's not super salty. Great the marinara sauce, phenomenal. Everything here is awesome. I absolutely love it. Steve, is there anything I forgot to talk about? Anything else you want to say? Anyway, I just love what I do. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, obviously, you're always smiling. It's evident that you I absolutely love what you do. You love talking to customers. You love putting out a phenomenal product. You really do. And look, everybody, I got to tell you, if you're looking for more restaurants like Steve Reno's, if you like restaurant content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we drop a new episode. Now, Steve, how can people find out more information about your restaurant? Well, we've got our web shops, uh, stevereno's.com. Okay. Um, that's the best way to go in and see my whole menu, see events that are happening on, see the brunch menu, because we do brunch on Saturday and Sunday. Cool. Um, well, of course, our Facebook and all that has events. We're going to have a guy doing some music this Friday cool. uh, for dinner. It would be, it'd be so awesome to have in here. Uh, Love it. Love it. Awesome. Look, you can also find a full listing for Steve Arenos on AmericasBestRestaurants.com. And I'm going to tell you right now, restaurant, food, everything. 1000% certified legit. You heard it from me. I love this restaurant. There's such a huge variety of different foods that you can get. And this is for everybody. Whether you Absolutely. come by yourself, whether you come with the family, Steve Marino's is the place to be. So look, that's pretty much it for me. I'm gonna crush this Reuben. <laughs> And I know Austin's hungry behind the camera because he's been telling me, come on, hurry up. <laughs> so look, we're going to let you guys go. We're going to see you guys on the next one.